To what's up guys welcome to my humble YouTube channel where I bring you fanfiction that will brighten your days. Before we start a subscribe is greatly appreciated and don't forget to leave a like and ring the bell icon so you won't miss exciting new fanfiction stories. Rimuru in Akame Ga Kill by Alex Kuhr 360 Chapter 1, A Brand New World. A few days later Rimuru's Pav I have been in this world for a few days now and I can categorically call it by far the worst world I have had the pleasure of coming to. After the sight I saw the first day I was here I had to hide out in the woods. The entire night was terrible I couldn't stop from crying at what I had seen earlier that day, praying with all my heart to go back home to my humble little town in the forest. But that won't do anything. I quickly learned while being in the woods that there are creatures that are known as danger beasts, that are like monsters in some ways, but unlike the monsters I know these ones act on instinct and don't have egos at all. Personally. The ones I have encountered have been pretty weak by my standards but from the information I've gathered there are not any strong ones in the area I am in. While hunting I learned which abilities I can and can't use, I can actually use most of my skills but the ones that affect the outside world take exponentially more mana than in my world, for instance even using black lightning once can drain my mana around 10% of the way down. Internal skills like great sage's abilities are the same as before so I can still use things like thought acceleration freely. Unfortunately, because of the extremely low amount of magicules in the area it take longer to regenerate my mana since it is solely coming from the passive aura of Veldora I am absorbing. Thankfully, I can still use gluttony much the same so I still have access to things like my potions or weapons, but now I have to pay a price in mana for the items I take out or put into it. This doesn't really affect everyday use of it, but it does make it a lot less useful in battle since I cannot just absorb every ranged attack that is sent at me. Fortunately. I still have my resistances it seems so I should be fine. While exploring I talked with a variety of people, mostly bandits who tried to kidnap me, but after I beat them a few of them were happy to answer some of my questions about this world. From what I have learned I am currently in a country called the Empire which is incredible corrupt and fell from its former glory days as the most prosperous and impressive country in the world after many years and stagnation. When I heard this empire had been going on for 1000 years I couldn't help but be surprised. From what I remember from Earth history it was completely unheard of for such large countries to stay strong for so long that is around the time the Roman Empire was in power and this empire isn't gone yet so it could continue for longer. From what I learned it isn't so much that the people are living happily and more of the kind of thing where the government is just that good at suppressing rebellion. That is what I came upon when I first arrived here, the most fearsome imperial general and her troops annihilating a rebellious faction. During all this time I have realized that like in my last world this world follows the law of the strong or right and take what they want and the weak die and get taken advantage of, I guess this is what happens when that concept I thought of as the nature law of monsters from my world is applied by humans. There is no end to the creativity and depravity of humans, giving the chance and opportunity humans can be almost infinitely crueler to each other than any monster could be. It makes me sick. Even in the other two worlds I have lived and I never heard of people or monsters doing some of things I have seen and in such a short amount of time after coming here. That is why I decided that while I am in this world I will have to embrace my new heart as a monster or else the old human me would have their heart broken way too much, or is the human part the real monster? After these past few days, I can't tell but right now none of that matters, I need to find something to do while I am here. I have no clue how I can get home to my friends but currently I don't think there is anything I can do, if my memory as an anime lore scholar serves me well I think I need to get connections with the empire and use it to find out the secrets of this world which will hopefully lead me to an escape from this world. I can flatly say that I have no desire to stay in this world for another second and if I ever found a way home I don't think I would ever want to come back. Currently it is night time as I am walking aimlessly throughout a different forest when I hear a fire burning and see some golden light. Well getting more information from some bandits could prove useful, who else would be out here so deep in the woods? But what I see when I approach the fire definitely betrays my expectations, a young girl is sitting there shoveling meat down her throat, it looked like she must not have eaten in weeks. She wore a black sleeveless bottom down shirt with a white collar and red tie, a black skirt and black socks and shoes. The most striking thing was that she had a large amount of blood all over her and the blade strapped to her side. The fire was so loud that if you spoke to her she wouldn't be able to hear anything short of screaming. While walking towards her I put my hands up so if she turns around she won't attack me, hopefully. Once I am around 10 feet away from her she quickly takes a peek behind her and looks back quickly. 
After another step forward in one fluid motion she turns around unsheathes her sword lunges at you with tremendous speed. I instinctively take a step back and reflexively move my hand to draw my katana, mid-swing that was aimed at my neck she switches targets toward my wrist reaching for my own sword. I wasn't quick enough to react and she cut a large chunk of flesh out of my wrist and only stopped at the bone, thanks to cancel pain it didn't hurt and physical attack resistance stopped it from cutting straight through but my hand can't move to pick up my sword now. When I use ultra speed regeneration my wrist isn't healing, this is annoying. Meanwhile the teen in front of you is obviously surprised my wrist and hand are not on the ground and her sword is still lodged in my flesh. I don't want to hurt this girl. I can't blame her for her kill first ask questions later rules of engagement, especially as a young attractive woman out in the woods alone. So instead of doing anything deadly I take my still healthy right hand and punch her in the face. To my surprise she dodges my fist, lets go of her sword, grabs my arm, and throws me over her back in a throw. I have to stop messing around and stop her so I can talk to her. I use, steel strength, and, strength in body, to jump up quickly just in time to catch a kick aimed at my head. After I catch her leg I quickly sweep her other leg and while she is falling toward the ground I intentionally follow her to the ground and then pin her arms and legs under me. Even after this she starts trying to bite me, I can see the cold dead look in her eyes and can't help but be sad that such a young person had to become like this to survive. I headbutt her in an attempt to get her to stop trying to bite me and it seems to work, I need to talk to her quickly. Hello. I am not trying to fight you. I mean you no harm and simply saw you and wanted to see who you were and perhaps ask you some questions since I am not from around here. After you say this you just look her straight in the eyes, and you see the light in her eyes change from dead eyes to that of complete rage and hatred. I will never betray my friends, you and your people may have killed some but don't think I will ever give them up to you. Holy cow. This girl is extremely fiery, but I don't know who her friends are and what she is talking about. I need to set things straight as soon as possible. I don't know who you or your friend are. I'm not going to hurt you I simply want to know about what is going on in this area. If you prefer you do not have to tell me anything about yourself, here I'll even let you go just please don't try to attack me again or I'll have to knock you out and tie you up. After that I slowly stop pinning her arms to her side and get off of her and stand up brushing myself off. Instantly after I got off her this girl jumped to her feet and ran over and pick up her sword and pointed it at me. I really hope she doesn't attack me again. She is looking at you warily and seems to be hesitant to attack you. I need to introduce myself and lighten the mood this is just terrible. Hello. My name is Rimuru Tempest. I do not have any intent to fight you and I hope we can get along with each other from now on. If I weigh ask you one question, why want my wrist heal? She is looking at me with a gaze that could kill but she is slowly lowering her sword, whether it is a feint or not I don't know but I don't really do anything about it if it is or not. Then she speaks. So, you don't know who me or my comrades are. You are not here to get information from me. You certainly are not a bandit or trafficker. You don't smell of drugs or alcohol so I just will take what you have said at face value. As for your wound all I can say is that it will never heal, that is the effect of this sword. Kirijimanji. You obviously posse some kind of tigu to be able to stop my swing with your mere flesh. So, her cursed sword makes it so people can't heal. I wonder how that damage would transfer to my slime form. I am sure I will find a way to heal myself soon enough. I would try a full potion but I think I should wait until she is not around because it might be too ridiculous to just easily heal the wound of a seemingly powerful cursed sword. What is a tigu though, like a superpower people have? Does she think I have some kind of physical enhancement ability? Maybe I can learn more about how the world works from her since she seems to be the most knowledgeable about power in this world. EA what's a Tigu? I have no idea what that is but I can assure you I am not your enemy, in fact I know almost nothing about anyone here. After my response she looks conflicted and then starts talking again. If you don't even know what a Tigu is then how do you explain your inhuman reactions, strength, and durability? Excuse me if I don't take your word at face value, I'm not happy after you interrupted me while I was eating my glorious meat. Not to mention today has been a trying day already without you. I wish I could make her believe me easier because it seems that this will take a while. I hate to do this but I am going to have to lie to her. Well to be truthful with you I am from a small village to the north that lives in the mountains where I have been training since I was a baby and now I am out exploring the world in search of adventure. If you say I am incredibly strong I can only assume that it is a result of my tireless training. She is understandably skeptical at that explanation but she seems to accept it for the time being. 
I feel sorry for lying but I also know if I told the truth that wouldn't help anyone, this is the best thing for me to do. Slowly she starts walking back to the fire and take a large chunk of meat and starts devouring it mercilessly, within a few seconds it is gone. I'm pretty sure that was a lot more superhuman than the strength I just showed but that's beside the point I need to do something to earn her trust. After thinking for a few seconds, I take out a bowl of chips that Trainee San enjoyed very much since this girl seems to like food. After the young woman devours another chunk of meat you nudge her with the bowl and after a few seconds starts eating them. I can see her eyes light up as she eats them but she quickly returns to her cold eyes, I guess she saw through my bribe, well what can a guy do? This will be a while so I sit down on a log a few feet away and take off my mask and start stretching. After a few seconds, the girl turns towards me to return the bowl but starts staring directly into my now visible eyes. After an awkward few seconds, I gave her my warmest smile and tried to look happy. After another minute or so she says something quietly that you almost didn't hear. Akame. My name is Akame. The end.